Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss the pharmacology of alprazolam. How this drug acts, what are the pharmacological actions and side effects of alprazolam. What is this alprazolam? This drug is used in the treatment of uh, GAD, generalized anxiety disorder. This is one of the anxiety disorder which is not associated with any specific reason. But still the anxiety is observed in the patient for longer period. So when the symptoms of the anxiety are observed for greater than 6 months, then it can be classified as generalized anxiety disorder. In such condition, alprazolam can be used. Similarly, this drug can also be given in the other condition, panic anxiety disorder. This is another type of anxiety disorder which is associated with the panic symptoms like uh, tremor, palpitations, tachycardia, sweating. All these are increase in the autonomic response in the patients. So in such conditions again the alprazolam can be used. So today in this video let us see how this alprazolam acts in these anxiety disorders. First of all let us see what is the structure of this alprazolam. Alprazolam is classified as a benzodiazepine and it is having a structure like this. But if we observe it is not having the simple benzodiazepine structure like the other benzodiazepines. But it is having a fused benzodiazepine ring system. Now what is the name of this ring present in the alprazolam? So this is the basic ring system that is present in the alprazolam which is a fused benzodiazepine. And this ring is going to be formed from the benzodiazepine as well as the 5 membered ring system. So in order to give the name for this fused benzodiazepine, first of all let us identify what is the names of these uh, individual ring systems. So let us give the numbering to this benzodiazepine ring. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So now this is a 1, 4 benzodiazepine. Now this 1,4 benzodiazepine is going to be fused with the 5 membered ring system containing 3 nitrogens. So let us give the numbering to this 5 membered ring system. We can start the numbering from the nitrogen and we have to give the least number to the nitrogens. The, so the possible numbering will be this is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. In this way this ring system is having the 3 nitrogens at 1st, 2nd and 4th position. So this is nothing but the 1, 2, 4 trizole. Now this 1,2,4 trizole is going to be fused with the 1,4 benzodiazepine. So we can indicate this as 1,2,4 trizole o 1,4 benzodiazepine. But where is the fusion? Here these two rings are going to be fused between the first and second carbon of the 1,4 benzodiazepine and third and fourth portion of the trizole ring system. But it will be somewhat confusing. So let us give the naming to the sides of the benzodiazepine. So this is the A side and this is the B side and so on. Now we can easily see that the third and fourth position of the trizole ring system is going to be fused with the A side of the 1,4 benzodiazepine. So now we can write this as 4, 3 dash A. So this ring system is nothing but the 1, 2, 4 trizolo, 4, 3 A, 1, 4 benzodiazepine. That is the ring system present in the alprazolam. Now let us give the naming to this alprazolam. So where we have to start the numbering? Since this is a fused ring system, we have to start the numbering from the first atom present on the fused ring. So this is the first carbon, then the second, third and we should not give the numbering to the bridge heads. So then it will be fourth, fifth, then sixth, then this will be seven, eight, nine and ten. In this way we can complete the numbering to this uh, fused benzodiazepine ring system. Now we can observe that the chlorine group is attached at the eighth position. Normally in the benzodiazepines the chlorine group is attached at the 7th position but in this fused benzodiazepine the numbering is different which is shifted by which the 7th position is shifted to the 8th position. So now here the chlorine is present at the 8th position which is essential for the activity. Now with this numbering let us give the name for this alprazolam. Solid we have seen the basic ring system is the 1,2,4 trizolo, 4,3A, 1,4 benzodiazepine. Then what are the side chains? 8th position chlorine is present so 8 chloro. First portion methyl group is present so 1 methyl and sixth portion phenyl group is present so 6 phenyl. And within this benzodiazepine ring we can observe the fourth portion is saturated. So we can indicate this by the indicated hydrogen so we can write it as 4H. So this is the complete name of the alprazolam. 8 chloro, 1 methyl, 6 phenyl, 4H, 1, 2, 4 trizolo, 4, 3A, 1, 4 benzodiazepine. Now let us see how this alprazolam acts. Alprazolam is one of the drug which is acting like a positive allosteric modulator on the GABA A receptors. So alprazolam can bind to this GABA A receptor at an allosteric site thereby it can increase the action of the 
GABA and the GABA A receptors. But these GABA A receptors are inotropic receptors which are made up of uh, five subunits. So they are pentameric in nature. And among them, the alpha subunit is more important, which influences the nature of the fun class galaction. If the GABA A receptor is composed of alpha 1 subunit, then it is responsible for the sedative, hypnotic, anticonvulsant, and amnesic actions. And alpha 2 subunit is uh, responsible for the anxiolytic and muscle relaxant activities. Similarly, alpha 3 subunit is again responsible for the amnesic activity, and alpha 5 subunit is responsible for the muscle relaxant activity. In this way, different subunits will show the different types of fun class actions, but here the anxiolytic activity is mainly associated with the alpha 2 subunit. But alprazolone is not finding any difference between these subunits. It can bind to the all types of GABA receptors which are associated with the either alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 or alpha 5. That's why alprazolone can produce all these as the fun class actions. So alprazolone is going to bind to one of the important receptors, GABA receptors. Here the alprazolone will have a different binding site on the GABA receptors. That's why it is called as allosteric modulator and it increases the activity of the GABA. Therefore, it is called as positive allosteric modulator. Now this alprazolone can bind to one of the allosteric site on the GABA receptors which facilitates the action of the GABA so that the GABA can bind to the GABA binding site on the GABA receptors. When the GABA binds to these receptors, it opens the chloride channels. And as the chloride is going to enter into the postsynaptic membrane, it produces the hyperpolarization. So hyperpolarization is the negative response because by entry of the chloride ions which are negative in nature, they reduce their membrane potential to the negative value such that the membrane cannot be depolarized and excited. In this way, when the GABA receptors are activated, it produces the inhibitory response. And because of this hyperpolarization at the various areas within the CNS, now the alprazolam can decrease the anxiety, it can increase the sedation, increase the hypnosis, it can induce the sleep and it can produce the amnesia, muscle relaxation as well as it can produce a loss of sensation. And it can also decrease the convulsions by inhibiting the neuronal excitation. So all these are the actions of the alprazolam by binding on the GABA A receptors. But among these, alprazolam is mainly used as anxiolytic in the treatment of generalized anxiety disorder as well as panic anxiety disorder and as an off-label purpose alprazolam can also be used to treat the convulsions because it's having some anti-convulsant activity what are the side effects since the alprazolam is acting on the GABA receptors which produce a sedation the side effects are again related to these central actions it can produce a sedation dizziness drowsiness all these are side effects are the central side effects which are related to the mechanism of alprazolam that's why these side effects are mainly observed with the first few doses of the alprazolam and after few doses these side effects can be somewhat minimized similarly alprazolam can also produce a muscle weakness because it produces a muscle relaxation and it can produce the impairment of memory alprazolam can produce some transient amnesia this type of amnesia results in the temporary loss of memory so that's why it's called as retrograde amnesia so whenever the drug is going to be stopped, again the memory can be restored. So this is more important in the elders where the impairment of memory results in the loss of functional activity. So this drug should be carefully given in the elder patients. Similarly, other side effects include the fatigue, confusion, dry mouth, loss of appetite. All these side effects can be observed with the alprazolam. Withdrawal effects. Even the alprazolam is not an addictive substance like the opioids. But still, it can produce few of the withdrawal effects when the treatment is going to be stopped suddenly. One of the important uh, withdrawal effects is the risk of convulsions. Already we have discussed that alprazolam is having the anticonvulsant activity. So it can suppress the convulsions. But when this drug is suddenly stopped, it can increase the induction of the convulsions. So particularly, this is more harmful in the patients who are having the status epilepticus. Similarly, rebound anxiety and rebound panic symptoms can be observed with sudden withdrawal of the alprazolam. The dose should be slowly tampered such that the withdrawal effects can be minimized. What are the contraindications? The alprazolam is metabolized by CYP3A4 enzyme. So CYP3A4 inhibitors can produce some drug interactions. But among them, two important drugs are the ketoconazole and, and itraconazole. 
these two drugs are contraindicated with the alprazolam because these two drugs are going to inhibit the metabolism of the alprazolam thereby they can increase the actions of the alprazolam which results in the toxicity and severe sedation and coma in the patients so alprazolam should be carefully given the cyp3 a4 inhibitors but among them ketoconazole and nitroconazole are strictly contraindicated similarly another contraindication is the narrow angle glaucoma in the open angle glaucoma alprazolam can be given with some precautions but in the narrow angle glaucoma it can increase the intraocular pressure so this drug is strictly contraindicated how it is given alprazolam is given as a tablet at the different doses it is available at the 0.25 mg and 0.5 mg as well as at the other doses like the 1 mg 2 mg and 3 mg and this drug is also available as a extended release tablet which is available at dose of 0.5 mg 1 mg 2 mg and 3 mg so initially the dose can be started at 0.25 mg thrice daily but the doses can be increased based on the conditions required in the patients so that's about the alprazolam alprazolam is a benzodiazepine having the fused benzodiazepine ring system it's having the 124 trizolo 43a 14 benzodiazepine ring system and this drug acts like the other benzodiazepines by binding to an allosteric site on the gaba a receptors which facilitates the action of the gaba and the gaba a receptors resulting in the hyperpolarization this drug is metabolized by cyp3a4 enzyme so cyp3a4 inhibitor should be carefully given along with uh, alprazolam and in the narrow angle glaucoma again this drug is contraindicated finally the alprazolam is available at the different doses from 0.25 mg to the 3 mg but the treatment should not be suddenly stopped because it can produce some rebound symptoms and withdrawal symptoms like the risk of convulsions so the dosing should be slowly tapered in order to prevent the withdrawal syndromes so that's about this alprazolam which is well known with the brand name xenax hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video